Hello everybody, so this is Gladys Wilson again, um, and I've continued on with chapter two. So I am liking uh, the Harry Potter series, I am liking the pace, I'm liking the way that it feels as I read it. Um, and so, so far so good. So in one of my shorts, I talk about this kind of, I, I describe it as an anxious feeling that I'm getting from um, trying to, to read. Um, I've been an av I was an avid reader for majority of my life, and then um, I went to grad school, and then just <laughs> I stopped reading a lot, it, you know, because when you're in grad school, you're kind of, you know, reading all the books and articles and things like that that your teachers gave you, and so I kind of got away from reading for a while, and I've been wanting to get back into reading, and so I've been. Um, taking trips to the library and borrowing books, but none of them have felt really good. And, and I've started to have this kind of negative reaction to reading, um, which I do not like at all. Because when I say I was an avid reader, I mean, I used to sit there um, in, and read like a book a day, like the libraries could not stand me because I just read and read and read. Um, and so, this feeling was just is just awful and i started to realize that it was the fear of maybe set, telling somebody hey i've read this book and they asked me a question and my mind just did not retain anything and i don't know where it's coming from uh, because i'm really good at retaining information i mean i've been all the way through the highest form of education you can have well I don't have a PhD, so maybe not the highest form, but um, it, it's just this thing. I'm not sure what it is. And so I've been trying to say, you know, tell myself, hey, you know what? You've got this. You can do it. Um, so start slow and build up um, and things like that. And the, you know, something was telling me, OK, find something that's more um, children, teen oriented, um, something that can also help you in your therapy practice because I work with teens and things like that. And so I, you know, Harry Potter came up. Uh, one of my teens had um, told me, hey, let's read Harry Potter together. And so um, that's what we're doing. We're reading Harry Potter together. Um, and so far, so good. So far, it feels good as I'm reading it. I'm not feeling that kind of anxiousness and need to retain the information and all of these different things. Um, I hope it continues this way because I'm only on chapter two. So for chapter two, let's see what I have so far. So I love the way um, Rawlings does the imagery. Um, one of my favorite things about reading is that I can imagine what the author is is saying um, and talking about. And, and sometimes that imagination gives like a feeling that comes along with it. Um, and so, for example, uh, one of the things I wrote down is what had she said in like the very beginnings of chapter two it says the sun lit up the brass number four on the door and crept um, into the living room and when you think about the sun you know of course the sun is not creeping or anything but it gives you that idea of just warmth just flooding everything um, which again in, in this particular chapter, there is no, it shows you that Harry has not felt any warmth um, from his aunt and uncle. And, you know, in the previous um, episode segment, I had talked about uh, the fact that his aunt and uncle, uncle seem very rigid in their values and beliefs and outlook in the world. And here you go putting a child in that mix, like that is not a good idea at all. When people are so fixed on their their values, beliefs, and their thoughts about the way things should be, and you throw in an extra child that is not theirs, um, it it becomes just you know too much. And as we see in chapter two, it it, it does become too much. Um, it you know shows those the uncle and aunt as very harsh people. Um, it it shows you know Harry you know the the thought of Harry like sleeping in a closet under the stairs and um, all of these things just show, you know, how cruel these people are um, in contrast to their son who they have just overly spoiled. You know, it seems like they're very um, concerned that Harry is going to do something wrong or say something wrong or 
grow up to be this awful person when their son is the one who's actually doing that. <laughs> and so it's just so strange and weird to me um, how this is happening um, with them, where they think like their son hung the moon and he can't do anything wrong. And yet he's the total complete opposite of Harry. Um, and, and he's envisioning what they think Harry's going to be if they just relax and allow him to be a child and things like that. Um, and so what else did I write in my notes about them? Oh, um, so this is not about them. This is about Harry. It sounds like Harry is starting to see. So, so some of the things that his aunt and uncle have seen um, in him Harry is starting to see as what is going on. Like he's it's starting to kind of tap him on the shoulders a little bit that there might be something extra different about him. Um, but it, it also sounds like he can't explore that much because the two people that he's depending on to raise him and care for him are very opposed to anything strange. And they've also punished him for things that are beyond his control um, you know, they're seeing it as he's in control of it somehow, but they're actually out of his control. And so um, he's being, you know, punished for certain things that are happening. Um, his hair is something interesting. I would love to see what all that about his hair is about um, as, as I continue reading, uh, where they kind of, they see his hair as unruly. And so they cut his hair. Um, and then it grows back like within the next day. Like what's going on with his hair? Can somebody, somebody spoil it? Let me know if there's something about his hair uh, and things like that. But he's starting to notice that there's some magical things. There are some things about him that are just a little bit different, but he's not allowing himself to explore it because of the disapproval of his, um, his aunt and uncle. Um, it's also um, interesting to see how, um, Dudley, his cousin, being so spoiled and rude and mean, um, how he's kind of, he has the, it sounds like he has the school uh, in fear or his peers at school in fear that they don't challenge him because of this group that he has. Um, and they mercilessly bully people and they've mercilessly been uh, bullying Harry um, and things like that. So on the on the realistic side of things, we do see it where, um, you know, there is that narrative where step parents um, sometimes mistreat their um, their stepchildren um, and things like that, children that are not biologically theirs. And in this case, it sounds like there's nobody that is um, standing up for Harry or challenging Harry, uh, challenging um, Harry's uncle and aunt on his behalf. Um, because it, it talks about him like coming to school in overly baggy clothes. Um, it talks about his glasses being held together by tape. Like somebody sees something and says something like his teachers, like somebody's not paying attention um, to this child because he's coming in this way. So in, in reality, if you ever see a child walking around and they're like in overly baggy clothes, um, glasses are something that's really important to a child because that kind of impedes on their ability to see the world. They can't participate in education very well because they can't see in order to, to read very well um, and things like that. So if you ever see some things like that happening, you know, say something and make some inquir inquiries um, as to what may be going on with that child. Um, and see if there's a way that maybe you can help the family. Maybe they don't, maybe the family has uh, hand-me-downs. Maybe there are hand-me-downs and, and they can't afford new clothing and things like that. But there are always caseworkers um, and people that can help a family to access, you know, better clothing, um, to access, you know, food, all of those different things. Um, when it comes to like eyewear and, and things like that for kids, you know, there are very, um, there are free resources out there. I know if a child like qualifies for Medicaid, you know, cause I work with, with kids who have been in the foster care system or are currently in the foster care system sometimes. And one of the things that I do know for a hundred percent is those kids have, um, Medicaid, um, and the, and Medicaid has a rule where they can get free glasses 
um, at least once a year, they can get free glasses. Um, and if something, um, if there's a reasonable explanation as to why they lose their glasses or their glasses break or something like that, uh, Medicaid can also help with that. So if you see something, please do say something. So chapter two is pretty interesting. It is now about the treatment of Harry. Um, and this is 10 years later. Again, if there are any spoilers you can give me about what's happening with his hair, uh, let me know because I think that's interesting. Um, all right, so leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys are reading. Um, take a look at my shorts. You know, I talk about mental health in them um, and different things like that. I would love to sit and have a chat with somebody, um, whether it could be podcast style or interview style, like live on, on YouTube or, or something like that. I would love to do that. So if you are interested in talking about your experiences with reading and books or just what you know about Harry Potter itself, I would love to have a discussion with you. Um, so leave me a comment, reach out. My email is in the description uh, box. Uh, leave a, a subject, like put in the subject something that I can pick up because my email does fill up with junk a lot. So leave something in the subject that I can pick up on that says, hey, this is somebody who's interested in talking and getting an interview or, or something like that. Um, all right. I will talk to you guys later. I look forward to reading your comments. All right. Bye.